Hey, what's up guys, Kuzu here. I just wanted to make a quick video explaining how to do the lock picking BRD farm. Um, you do actually have to kill a few bosses in here as well. You have to kill two bosses specifically. So we're gonna have to practice that a little bit before I get it all down. Um, for your poisons, you wanna use a instant poison in your offhand and a crippling poison in your main hand as I'm showing here. I'm gonna let the video run in the background, I'm talking over it, explaining what I'm doing, explaining why I'm doing it, and uh, you guys can see. Um, I am, you need to have lockpicking trained up as well, I believe it is 275 lockpicking skill to do this, so you need to learn to level that first. I'm running a standard PvP spec, um, subtlety PvP spec, this guy you can distract right here as well where you need to get your improved sap for the boss, master of deception, you need to camouflage to, uh, to walk faster. It's a very, very standard PvP spec, so if you are spec into PvP, you can do this no problem. You can also do this spec as combat, though it'll make it a lot slower for you, and um, you will have a lot less fail saves, fail saves with your vanish. So basically what you do is you follow this route I'm showing you here. You're pickpocketing every single um, guard and mob, and um, opening this door right here, you need to stand right between these three little dots you can see here I'm marking and open it. You will not pull any mobs. After this, you go up this way. There can be an, um, a fire lord right here. If there's a fire lord pack at these mobs, you will just skip it because they have an AoE aura, um, an immolate that will pull you. I'm going to speed up the video a little bit here to show you guys which mobs I'm pickpocketing, which I'm not. And uh, you will be running, as I showed on the screen uh, right now, a uh, add-on called Liatrix Plus. In this add-on there is um, a little setting you can turn on which makes, makes auto-looting faster. So I'm not using a macro for my pickpocket, I'm just clicking the um, clicking the spell with auto-loot on and the add-on working as it should. So you're getting a bunch of food, uh, lock boxes, and healing potions which you can also use for the bosses if you are not too sure you can kill them without it yet. Um, this this is basically this basically can be done in around previous gear. I have a little I have mostly previous gear. I have a few. I have two I have two three epics on, but you can you can do this in, in previous gear and be completely fine. So after you do this ring of law, the right side, you will go down here. You will lockpick these mobs in this circle. Um, you can distract this guy right here and continue the lockpicking. And this is the first boss right here we will kill. He can drop a uh, scepter for four and a half gold. He can drop the fiery weapon enchant and a few other fun items as well. Um, you will be pickpocketing them first. Then you will be sapping the emissary on the right. Uh, wait for your energy ticks to go all the way up. When they're up, you will cheap shot this guy. Uh, do one hemo and sinister strike. You will then blind the other ad and um, focus on the main guy. He casts a molten blast, which I was lucky enough here to uh, resist. But you will you will pop your evasion. You will kick the molten blast. You will build up five combo points. After you have five combo points, you will co blood eviscerate, and he will be dead. Um, you can also, if you have no uh, combo points on the boss, you can kill the Storsums. After this, you will gouge the other mob, you will loot the item, which here is 4.5 gold, and you will vanish. So you will use your first vanish here. Your other vanishes are used as fail-safes. If you, there is a slight chance on the mobs that they will resist your, um, your pickpocket. If they do that, you will have to vanish or you will have to run away. I will show you later in the video um, a few spots where you can uh, you can you can run away and you can still be safe. You can sprint out of the instance and you can jump out of the window. Um, so you will do the other side of the ring of the law here. You will pickpocket all the mobs. You will make sure that you don't aggro them. If you're specced into Master of Deception, there will be a very very low possibility that you that you don't run into them, except if you run straight like inside the mob basically because you're so high. So here I show a little uh, little part here where I actually resist my uh, lockpick. So you resist, you wait for the mobs to attack you a little bit, you run away and you vanish. After that, if you do want to make this safe and you don't want to risk dying here, you could stop uh, a little bit and wait for your vanish to go up so you don't have to necessarily uh, die or whatever. But if you're right here where I am right now, you can actually sprint out either out of the instance or you can sprint out of the little window. At the end of this road down the, um, down the little hallway, there is a window you can jump out. And right here you see I aggroed the Fire Lord. 
from the Evil Eight Aura. But if you run away and you sprint a little bit before they um, before they attack you, you will actually not aggro them uh, because they are that low level. Um, this window right here, you can jump out of. You can land on that little platform, and the mobs will reset. So that is a little safe safe spot. I will show you doing me doing that in the video later. So after this, you will continue down this road. You'll pickpocket all the humanoids on the way. And you will go down to the little hallway on the right in the golems. Um, you will not kill any of the bosses yet. But you will pickpocket most of the gnomes. This is one of the few spots that you can be caught. And it can be a little bit dangerous. So I recommend you use distract on the moving mobs. And just pickpocket the ones that you find safe to do. So all of these can be pickpocketed easily. Except the one in the corner. You should skip that one. Um, the other ones are completely safe, everything else you can just do. And we will work our way into the Grim Gostler now. Um, the Grim Gostler, um, they are all yellow mobs, you don't have to um, worry about that. You can actually also on stealth, you can't pickpocket them, but you do not have to worry about any, any hostile mobs. Um, and then after we pickpocket the Grim Gostler, we will actually be killing the, um, the Gnome, which actually can also double as a vendor. So um, that guy will have a chance of dropping a barman shanker if you are willing to try to get that as well. He can drop jumper cables, which you can auction house on the uh, you can sell in the auction house for a little bit, and a few other items as well. Um, so I will show you how to do that specifically. It's very important that you pickpocket the grim patrons and the uh, the, uh, the ghosting patrons and all these mobs basically before you kill the boss, because after you kill the boss, they will become hostile and they will walk around. So you will not be able to do that afterwards. These guys can still resist your pickpocket, and if they do, you need to vanish, and um, you need to either either wait for the vanish to come up, or just continue and play it a little bit risky, <laughs> as I will. You can see here, there's a mob right coming up that will resist my, vanish, my pickpocket, though I will continue. I have made uh, approximately around every time I've done this I've made at the very least 35 gold and at the top end I've made up to 65 gold an hour doing this um, it can be a lot faster if you get a little bit more gear because you can kill the bosses faster each run takes approximately 15 minutes uh, to do so and that is completely solo you do this completely solo you don't need help from any friends at all all you need to do is you need to invite a friend to your group you need to log into your alt, make that friend, invite your alt to the group, and make the alt the party leader. As you can see that I have my uh, my alt called Usuk in the party, and I will show you guys how to how to sort that whole thing out afterwards. So, we reach the boss now, we will pickpocket these four Gosling patrons bef before him, and you will talk to the guy, you can sell some stuff if you wish. You will buy four of these Dark Ale mugs. You will go over to this wall right here, and you will throw them right next to the table. The mobs will come over. You can pick. You can pick lock your um, your lock picks in between. You can do one in between every mob. Once they start drinking, the animation goes off. You can kill them. They do not fight back. They don't do any damage. You just kill them. They drop rune cloth and a few other fancy stuff. So you pick pocket uh, lock pick each one of these little boxes in between to save some time. They come over. They take a drink. You kill them. The reason why you do it right here is if you do it closer to the other mobs, they will aggro and you will probably die. So keep doing this four times. Uh, between the last one, you can actually lock pick two junk boxes to save a little bit more time. And after this, I will show you guys how to kill the boss. Um, so you will be lock, you will be pickpocketing the boss as well before you kill him. Uh, after you do that, uh, approximately twenty to thirty seconds after, he will uh, say that his lock it, his pockets got picked and the mobs will turn hostile. But um, we will be uh, using LOS to kill him. You don't need any CDs, you don't need any parts to kill this guy. He's very, very easy, as you will see. So you will open up with a garrote, and you will kite him over to the little uh, wall there is over here. Because then we will be able to LOS his shadow bolts and immolates. Because he's not kickable, he's not stunnable, don't attempt to do it, it's not possible. You can use evasion here, he hits for 250 approximately every attack, 2 to 300. As you see, I'm very, very low. Uh, I've, 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 missed a lot, I've missed a lot up. I have not used any potions. I've not even used my uh, my evasion yet. I'm still killing him. So my first five combo points I used for an exposed armor, and the uh, the second ones I used for a cold blood eviscerate. I got the jumping uh, the jumper cables here on my run, uh, which on my server sells for six gold. 
He can also drop a green, which is around one to two gold. He can drop a barman shanger, which is four and a half gold, or he can drop like some random blue chests, which are around two gold. This guy right here, you can sell your stuff as well. You cannot repair, but you are able to sell. So during this whole run, I sold the healing potions that I got because I already had a lot of them stored up. You will type in slash camp, which will lock you out of the instance. After this, you will then lock into your alt character. You will have to wait for two minutes. After those two minutes, the leadership of the party will be transferred over to your alt and you will be able to reset the dungeon, lock into your main and start again. Um, so during this whole thing, I started with 70, 72 gold and 80, 78 silver. At the end, in raw gold, I had 82 gold and 82 silver. Um, and 11 room cloth, which is approximately like half a gold on the auction house if you do sell it. And the jumbo cables are 6 gold or 40 silver if you do vendor them instead. Which means I earned 16, point, uh, 16 gold and uh, 59 silver or 10 gold and 99 silver from a, from a 15 minute run. This, these 15 minutes are counting in the 2 minutes I'm AFK on my character right here. This means that you will basically be making anywhere between 44 gold to 66 gold an hour, 15 minute runs, four runs an hour, you don't get lockouts. This gold per hour can be a little bit reduced if you decide to wait for your vanishes or if you die to the bosses, obviously, but the more you do it, the more you practice, the more gold you've been making. So this is what you do if the sap resists on the mob. Um, you can still kill the boss, don't worry about it. You might have to use a Tissle T though for it. So the sap resists, I engage the boss, I pop my evasion, I try to build up some combo points, I pop my Tissel T, kick his, um, kick his spell, use my Cold Blood Eviscerate. After this, blind the other mob, focus on killing the boss. The most important thing is you just nuke the boss down, keep the other mob CC'd, and you should be good to go. He can cast a uh, dot on you, which you will have to wait out. Don't vanish with a dot on you, because you will die, the mobs will re-engage you. So I, I um, gouge the mob here, wait for the, uh, the dot to run out, and I vanish. Good to go, can still keep running it. Right here, um, if your sap resists, you vanish and you immediately afterwards um, pickpocket pick the mob, they will evade and you will actually re-engage combat. So you need to wait a little bit for the mobs to, um, to, to, to basically idle before you do it. You can run out of the instance here though, as I show and you'll be fine, uh, good to go. So right here, there's a little spot where you can jump out the window. You jump out this window right here and you will lose combat. You can either go up the little mountain here and you can jump through the roof actually to get back into the, um, the, the, um, the mobs, or you can jump down the road and stealth back way the other way. Um, with that being said, guys, Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you'll be able to get your epic mount right around in style and um, be good to go on that on that little road. Get your consumables for raid. Um, this will make you anywhere between, again, 30 to 60 gold, depending on what you do and how you do it. But thank you so much for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. And um, we'll see you guys later. All right.